Well, good day, good day to each and every one of you. That's right. I do hope and pray that you are enjoying and celebrating life. Well, welcome back to Excel Excellent Living, words of inspiration and empowerment. And I tell you what, I am so excited. I've been waiting for such a while to be able to get back to doing these videos. And I'm, I can't wait to continue and to get back on this path again um, with being able to post regular uh, videos. Um, I also want to um, ask that you will continue uh, to pray for all of these families that have um, suffered a tragic loss in these recent shootings. Um, some have gotten national report, you know, national uh, media. And then, of course, there are those that have not. And so we're just asking you, I'm asking you to join me as we continue to pray for families across this world. We know that the war is still going on over in, in other countries because there's even more than one war, right, that's going on. And there's a war in our homes. We, some of us got a war in our homes, right, war in our communities. Um, local community, state, nation, worldwide, there is always something that is going on that requires us to pray. And so I'm asking you to uh, join in with me uh, in prayer. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about, especially in light of everything that's been going on, um, we're going to talk about this focus that I've had this entire week. And that focus is learning how to trust God. Um, you know, we, we've gone through and we're still going through, as all of you know, a, a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. And while um, information is not being distributed as it was before, it doesn't mean that, you know, things are just over. Um, but we've been overwhelmed by so much gas prices, um, the cost of housing, you know, um, the, the cost of supplies, the demand uh, of supplies and the shortage of supplies and baby formula I mean, you name it, right? We've been going through it. And so it has um, caused us to really uh, take an opportunity to assess where we are uh, in Christ and where we are in that area of trust. And so I just want to go to a few scriptures with you. And again, thank you all so much. Those of you, um, I'm, I'm new to, I'm not new to YouTube, but I am new to a lot of this uh, new way of doing things. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead, please, and subscribe to my page, Excel Excellent Living. Um, please go ahead. I have two pages, but this is the one, Excel Excellent Living. If you can please subscribe um, to my page, it is my hope and desire to, um, to broadcast the word of God, to bring words of inspiration and empowerment to into the homes of many families worldwide. And so please go right ahead and touch that subscribe button and like it too, if you like it. <laughs> okay. And so now we're going to go to the word of God. And uh, again, my focus uh, for this week has been learning how to trust God. I think sometimes we think we know, right? How to trust God. I'm going to take away some of this light. Let's see. Nah, we got to keep that. But I think that there are times when we think that we know, right? How to trust God. But the question is, do we really know how to trust God? Are we really, really trusting God? Or are we religiously saying that we trust God? Okay, so we're going to explore this word together with the objective that at the end of this particular word of inspiration and empowerment, we will really know whether we're trusting God. So when we take a look at Isaiah chapter 26, that's where we're going to go. We're going to visit perhaps a couple of scriptures, but we certainly want to go to Isaiah chapter 26, okay? And then we're going to journey from there throughout the word. And when we get to Isaiah, where are you? There you go. Uh, chapter 26. I'm going to read uh, just a couple of verses, okay? All right. In that day, verse 1, shall this song, song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. 
For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. Okay, so here in Isaiah chapter 26, I want us to take a look, if you will. You may not have your Bibles, but if you do, go right ahead and pull that up, whether it's paperback, hardback, electronic, cell phone, whatever. When you take a look at verse 3, the scripture says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because, keyword, because he trusts in thee. Then he says, trust ye in the Lord forever. Why is this so important when it comes to um, trusting in the Lord? Let's go to Matthew chapter six, very familiar passage of scripture. Here Jesus is talking again about trust, about trust. Why is it that the enemy is fighting us so hard? You got to know what area he's fighting you in and what is he trying to get us um, to do? What is he trying to prevent us from doing? So when you take a look at Matthew chapter six and oh, is it a time, hallelujah, for us to trust the time is now for us to trust in the Lord. We're going to talk about trust in just a few minutes here. So let's take a look at verse 25 and we're going to journey on down to verse 33, okay? It says here, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal will we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles, the unbelievers, they seek that. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient uh, unto the day is the evil thereof. So here Jesus is saying, why are you stressing? Why are you worried about certain things? He says, don't take no thought. Trust God. You know, I was thinking about this as I was preparing and studying this word and even ministering this word to uh, the women of straight talk. And to the Rock Life, uh, Rock Wives, the, the Real Housewives of Christianity Association members in our weekly call and prayer is that, you know, Isaiah 26 says something that's so important that when we keep our minds stayed on the Lord, focus on the Lord, that he will keep us in perfect peace. But, but how does that happen? So the opposite of peace is chaos, right? So then if you're, you're going through a lot of chaos and your mind is over here and over there and you're feeling anxious and you're upset and, and you're on this emotional roller coaster, then it's apparent you're not trusting the Lord because you're not experiencing peace. Because the word of God says, when you trust God, you will experience peace. And the other side of that is when you look to him, you look to him because you trust him. And oh my goodness, when I started to think about how trusting God is absolutely essential in the life of every believer. So over in Hebrews, the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? But when you look up the word trust, 
it leads you down the path to the word of faith. Now let's talk about faith in just a moment here, for just a moment rather. Let's talk about that because what really is faith, okay? And so when you when you think about faith, I'm studying from one of my study materials here. When you think about faith as we are being led by the Holy Spirit, what does faith really mean? So faith, as we know, means that we trust, right? That we trust that God is, is trustworthy, that God is dependable, that we can rely on him. So when you go to Genesis chapter three, let's see this. Let's go to Genesis chapter three, because we already know there's nothing new under the sun, right? There's nothing new under the sun. King Solomon said that, but we know that as well. So let's go to Genesis chapter three. And I'm going to be wrapping up in just a few minutes here. When we take a look at verses one, I believe I want to go through verse seven. I'm going to try to read through this kind of fast. All right. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it, lest you die, right? And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knew it, doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord called out unto Adam and said unto him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And here's the key. And he said, who told you that you were naked? God is asking Adam, who told you this? Who told you that you were naked? Now, I know that perhaps you have not heard it quite like this, but in all actuality, what we see is where their trust actually lied. This is what we see. Whose voice, whose words did they trust? And it is evidence to us that they trusted the words of the serpent more than they trusted the word of God. And so again, if we want to experience perfect peace, we have to trust him. And again, the reason we are experiencing perfect peace is because we trust him. And because we trust him, we keep our minds, our focus on him. And I just began to think about this as this word was just saturating and meditating and ministering to me. I got so excited because I thought about how God expects every believer to trust him. How this relationship, he initiated this relationship with us as humans. We became believers because he initiated this relationship with us. And he's saying, you've got to trust me. This is not an option. Every believer must trust me. And what does he want us to trust? He wants us to trust that he is trustworthy. He wants us to trust that he is reliable. He is dependable. And he says, trust no man. Of course, we know that God is saying that you cannot trust someone to be able to come through, you know, but he's saying, don't trust them the way you trust me because I'll never disappoint you. I'll never forsaken you. I'll never abandon you. I will not reject you. You know, no, I'm not limited like man. So you can't put the same trust in man that you can put in me. I am your source. I know the future. I know the present. I know the past. You can trust me because I know the thoughts that I think for you. Trust the thoughts that I think for you. And oh my goodness, yes, it's easy to trust God when things are going good. But can we trust God when things are like they are today? 
when you hear about this horrific crime, these crimes that have been committed, not just today and last week and the week before that, but all of this stuff that's been going on in your life, can you trust God to be there for you? Can you trust God to bring you through? Can you trust God to bring you out? Can you trust God to sustain you through it all? Can you trust him? Knowing that he is reliable, he says that he that cometh to me must believe. That means he got to trust that I am. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. He's got to trust that I am. And you know what? He's not talking about this redefined faith that we're hearing about within this past century, you know, this past new century. We're hearing about this redefined faith that if you want money, you know, you want prestige, everybody's talking about they know God. This is not the biblical principle of faith and trust. This is not the trust that the word of God is founded in a, in a relationship with God is established upon. He's saying, trust me, trust my plan. I remember as I began to come to a close with this particular video with hopes of coming back to you again with words of inspiration and empowerment, attending a marriage retreat. And one of the exercises that we had to do, my husband and I, was he had to blindfold me at one point and I had to blindfold him at one point. And each of us had our own path that we had to lead each other down while trusting one another. And there were times, of course, of uncertainty because I didn't know the way of the path, but my husband did. And I remember hearing his voice because my eyes were closed. I could really hear his voice. I mean, it sounded like not only his voice, but I also heard the tone of his voice. I heard his words so clear. And that part alone was so amazing because I thought to myself, how long have I been with my husband? And because my eyes were open, I really didn't always hear his voice. And the way he used his words and expressed his words. But now that I'm blind, I can hear. And I'm listening and he, he'd say, honey, I need you to turn to the right. Not all the way. Just do a 180 or 360 or just move a little bit to the right. Move a little bit to the left. Um, I need you to step up about three inches. I need you to step down because we were going down steps. And how I had to pay attention to every word he spoke, but not only pay attention, I had to follow. And I remember doing that moment of feeling like, where are we going? You know, and I'm like, you know, because when you're blind and you're used to having control, right? You want to be able to know the way. And I'm like, well, where are we going? How far is it from the end? You know, he's like, you just got to trust me. And no matter how afraid you become or how much you want to take control in that moment, you cannot remove your blindfold. And then I remember leading him. And because I didn't want him to make any missteps and because I saw how gracefully and carefully and detailed it was when he led me, I made sure that I gave him details and I let him know you can trust me. And the message to the both of us were, was that whenever there are times when times of frustration or times that we're facing challenges, times throughout our marriage, I'm going to be relying on you to trust me and you can trust me. Well, you know, that trust may be limited because my husband doesn't know the future. My trust may be limited because I don't know the future. But when we take put on the blindfold of life, blinding even ourselves to what we want, to what our plans are, what our hopes are, what our dreams are, and we put that blindfold on, what we're really saying is, God, I trust you. We're saying, I trust you to lead me and guide me and to know every detail and that with you, I am guaranteed to make it to the destination because after all, you know the thoughts you think toward me and the thoughts that you have toward me, they are good. They're not to do me any harm, but to bring me to an expected end. How many of you want to get to where God want you to get to? How many of you want to become who God has called and preordained you to become? Well, the only way you can do that is you've got to trust God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And you've got to experience this. And trust is built through this relationship. So you can't have a relationship of trust without a relationship of knowing who God is. And you got to trust his word. Trusting God's word is so important. They fail at trusting God's word in the beginning. Let's not repeat. Let's not repeat history. And think that we can have a relationship with God. And think that we can be blessed of God. And think that we can redefine faith to fit what we want it to look like. That we'll go out and do all the stuff that we want to do and accomplish all the goals that we want to accomplish and say that we did these things because we trust God. When all along we were disobeying his word. And so I do hope and pray that you have enjoyed today's words of inspiration and empowerment And Lord willing, I'll be back with you again real soon with more words of inspiration and empowerment. And don't forget to go right ahead and and like this video and please share this video with someone else so that they too can become a subscriber. Thank you so much. Be blessed and have an excelling day.